Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, October 11th, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, whoop, only Hang Sang hanging down a little bit. Mixed over there in Europe and up a little bit over here in the States, including oil and gold. And what's today? Ah, It's October 11th. October 11th. October 11th. The 11th month of the Trump stock market rally that only we, the Trends Journal, called as soon as it began. The first ones. And, of course, we're still in the camp. There's going to be a correction. You can't have it going up this fast and this high without a downslide. But what do we see? Ah, You'll see something new. And it's going to be a slowdown, but not right away. We'll be talking about that more. But right now, stocks close at record highs. After Fed signals, it's going to raise rates. Why is that good news? Well, it won't be. It may be this time, but it won't be if they keep raising them. And there's fears coming out right now, and you're hearing it from all people like Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock. That's the largest asset managing group in the world. And none of these groups ever existed when I was a young man until they turned it all over to the bigs. And he's worried. He said, quote, people are assuming another tightening of the rates this year and another three next year. Well, some are saying two next year, but that'll be four and that'll be too much. He goes on to say, could we see an inverted yield curve like next year or early 2019? We want to avoid an inverted yield curve. An inverted yield curve means that short-term interest rates are higher than long-term ones. And that won't allow the big gamblers to keep on gambling the way they are. And boom, the market goes boom. So, the three major indexes have reached all-time highs and are all up more than 10% in 2017 And now they've been lifted again on the hopes of tax reform. Not tax reform, more breaks for the big guys so they can keep the Ponzi scheme going. And oil prices went up a little bit because OPEC says "Ah, there's going to be more demand in 2018. Hey, if OPEC says it, it must be true. Again, what we see right now is this is where it is. It's the market is range bound And we've been calling it better than anyone else on any other broadcast in any other newspaper, in any other magazine. We've hit this number and it's range bound. So Saudi Arabia is also saying things like they've trimmed crude supplies to its biggest buyers in Asia. Well, they have, but not on purpose. They trimmed it because they're getting more competition from others. So it's not like they're holding that back production. They're holding back sales because they're losing them. So there we are. And gold. Gold moved up a little bit, even though interest rates are moving up. And as you well know, the higher the dollar goes, the higher interest rates go, the lower gold goes. But they're saying that gold went up today because over there in Catalan, yeah, they did it about face over there. They they declared a declaration of independence, but we're not going to take it. Well, we just said we are, but we're not going to do anything. So things have calmed down over there, so the euro gained a little bit of strength. But nothing really to talk about. And again... When interest rates go higher, the dollar goes stronger, gold goes down, but it's trading in a very positive range right now. But the real news to look at and the news that you can use is what's going on with China. But remember we reported that China made a deal with Iran and Russia. And they says, listen, 
We don't want to deal in them petrodollars anymore. No, you keep them. Don't want to deal in dollars, you got it? We'll give you a yuan when we buy your oil. And besides, America puts sanctions on you so you can't use dollars anyway. But we'll take your oil, we'll pay you in yuan, and if you don't want our yuan, you could cash it into gold. You can cash it into gold. That's right. So, now what's happened? China will compel Saudi Arabia to trade oil in yuan. That's the word out. So, the United States is the world's reserve currency because a lot of it has to do that it's based on petrodollars. The deal made with Nixon and that Saudi king back then. If Saudi Arabia and other countries join in with Iran and Russia and start selling their oil for other currencies other than the petrodollar, boom, a crash that we've never seen before will hit the United States and shake the world because this whole thing is being leveraged up on dollars that the Federal Reserve could print at any time. But once the petrodollar isn't there as a standard, yeah, you could take your dollars to uh, Walmart in a wheelbarrow. That's right. It'll be like the Bolivar in Venezuela. So there we go. Big one. Watch it. Watch it closely. Trade deficit in goods widens to a record over there in the UK. So the Brexit isn't working. You know why? Because all they're doing is BSing about Brexit, and they have not become a more self-sustained economy, which they can be. So as long as they keep buying more and selling less, phew, the economy goes down. Very simple. Schwabler says debt and liquidity levels endanger global economy. That's right, they're all printing up this cheap dough. And here's what he said. Wolfgang Schwab has warned that the spiraling levels of global debt and liquidity present a major risk to the world economy. He said new bubbles forming due to the trillions of dollars that central banks have pumped into the market. And he warned of the risks of stability in the Eurozone, particularly those posed by bank balance sheets burdened by post-crisis legacy of non-performing loans. And in Italy, they have almost $400 billion of them. And that's all this thing is, is one big scam. Let's go back to gold. Let's go back to the petrodollar, and we could stay on the euro as well. Economists all over the world are concerned about the increased risks arising from the accumulation of more and more liquidity and the growth of public and private debt, he said. Huh. His comments come a day after Christine Lagarde, head of the IMF, said the world was enjoying its best growth spurt since the start of the decade, warned of the threats on the horizon High levels of debt in many countries to rapid credit expansion in China to excessive risk-taking in financial markets. That's right. Rapid credit expansion in China. A debt-to-GDP ratio of over 300. And excessive risk-taking in financial markets. Hey, BlackRock, you hear that? What are they worth now? Like they got some $6 trillion in deals that they're working? Schwabler's views also chime with those of the Bank for International Settlements, which said that the world has become so used to cheap credit that higher interest rates could derail the global economic recovery. 
What did we start with? The Fed is raising rates. What's that guy from BlackRock worried about? Higher short-term rates so they can't do their dirty deals. But don't worry about it, because here, another story. Let's put it together in a global nomic viewpoint. Capital markets, debt fuel takeovers set to eclipse listings. A boom in debt funnel takeovers is set to eclipse money raised on European stock markets for the first time since the eve of the last financial crisis. A glut of cheap high yield debt has seen European companies with a market value of 30.8 billion bought out by mostly private equity groups compared with 34.5 billion of new money raised in European stock market listings. Soaring demand for yields at an all-time low interest rate has allowed buyers of companies to raise 85 billion euros in European leveraged loans over the first three quarters of this year, outpacing the 71 billion for all of 2016. Private equity groups borrowing cheap money and keeping the Ponzi scheme going as they get richer, fatter, and bigger, and we all get a lot less in everything, everywhere, every place. Just like I talked about that big stock buyback yesterday from Walmart. Rather than giving the money to the people, a lot of them on welfare, just makes those Waltons richer. And that's all they're doing. And we're seeing the problems building up here. Let's go back to what I'm talking about with China demanding payment and you want and not petrodollars. This thing's going to crash hard when that petrodollar is no longer the dollar it used to be. Ah, weak productivity hampers global recovery. Huh. It's according to the Brookings Institution. Although 2017 is likely to be an improvement on 2016, there are concerns that the global economy is not growing fast enough to raise living standards in many countries because the big fat crooks are stealing it all. Brookings Institution, that's funded by the big fat murderous crooks in war and in the economy. And what else do we have over here? Ah, Renault sees course for electric vehicles and emerging markets. A very important story. Renault is doing some smart things. They're building a lot of inexpensive cars that they're selling for $4,000, the key quid in India. Growth in emerging markets such as Brazil and India will be driven by its entry-level range of cars because people cannot afford higher levels. And what they're doing is very smart. Here is from their chief operating officer. Quote, if the technology exists, we will not develop it internally. He's talking about electric and self-driving. They're wasting a lot of money in two things that have a lot of development to come to. Just like developing the electric light. You didn't have a patent on it, did you? No, not when somebody did it a little different. Or the combustion engine. Same thing with this smart move. China is charging ahead in global electric car race. Wow, what a surprise. Wall Street Journal, big story. They say that China's booming with electric cars. Yeah, 350,000. Yeah. 24 million sold last year. They went from 1 million in 2000 a year to 24 million now. But China is the world's largest battery maker. That's very important. So they're going to try more and more to develop it with a battery centric. And we don't think that's the future unless they come up with a whole new way. But once again, all eyes on China. And we've been saying it longer than anyone else. Not only in your top trends of this year, 
buy and sell China, but pointing out if you want to see where the innovation is going to be coming from, remember Silicon Valley, Rust Belt 2.0, China is the future. And then finally, on the home front, a lot of talk here about Trump. Trump challenges Tillerson to IQ test over moron claim. I think it's fake news, but if he did that, I guess we'd have to compare IQ tests, Trump said. And I can tell you who is going to win. Ah, good. Another one, GOP senator rebukes Trump over reality show conduct. Huh. Caught in bright lights of a reality show that never ends. Hey, guess what? You guys are late, man. Before Trump got into the race, two months before, liars, cowards, freaks, and fools, welcome to the presidential reality show. It's always been a reality show. We just got a different freak running the show. Has to learn to talk into the teleprompter like Obama did, that other freak. Yeah, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner. You remember that troop surge in Afghanistan? The destruction and obliteration of Libya? Assad has to go? And I'm really good at killing people. The 4,000 drone strikes that killed innocent ones. It's the presidential reality show. Not only here, in a country near you. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.